Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Saturday's edition of the MUFC Daily. Fandoms, protests, it's all very conflicting, frustrating, and confusing. The problem with fandoms, like there is the world, world at large, there's different people with different agendas and different opinions. Some people in life just don't want to rock the boat, and some people want to rock the boat far too much, and some people just don't want to rock it enough. At the beginning of this week, a protest was announced for people to go to Old Trafford and protest the situation with the owners, the board, and the manager. But top reps, the people apparently who lead the fandom, decided it would be wrong and rude and embarrassing to protest the manager. So obviously being afraid that no one would turn up, the people running this protest made it clear this would not be an ollie out protest. If I was in the UK and I was planning to go and on hearing that this wasn't an ollie out protest, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go on. And you know, the thing is, I wouldn't go just to say I'm going to protest ollie if you want me to or not, because that's not the point. There's going to be trouble then. I wouldn't go. And if you are fed up with this manager, of course you're fed up with the ownership and the board. But this is not what this is about. Of course it's about putting pressure on them to sack this accidental manager. We're looking at it now a week since we lost to City and it looks like we're stuck with him. And it's embarrassing. And by the way, by the way, Harry Maguire, you're a defender. Scoring goals doesn't sit anyone down. But never mind, my friend. You, you are part of the Oli era and you are an embarrassment. And you embarrass yourself again. In fact, you embarrass Manchester United fans again. The sooner we can move you on, young Harry, let's not forget about the incident in Greece, by the way, which I don't believe allegedly you are innocent about. But there you go. You even found guilty and you appealed it. Whatever happened to that appeal, by the way? We haven't heard anything. But anyway, that's allegedly. That's my opinion. Nobody else's opinion, my opinion. So there's a lot of things that have come with Harry Maguire. I would just bin this guy straight away. He's the most uninspiring captain I've ever seen since Alan Shearer. But at least Shearer was a great striker and inspired people that way. But he's just dour and boring. Anyway, so we've got different groups of people with different agendas and different points of view. So some of you do not want to protest this manager. I heard some other idiots saying, would it be nice if people were chanting Ollie's name at the protest? I think these kind of things are going to happen. If you chant Ollie's name, they're going to say they love him. Let's keep him. What was the point of going down there? Because the problem is with top reds, they're full of propaganda and they want to support this manager. They want this accidental manager to remain because secretly they, they hazard some hopes that he's Sir Alex Ferguson in disguise. Or are they really Liverpool City fans? Or are they on the take? I really do not know at this time, but I do know that the club is on its knees. I do know that some of the fandom I'm embarrassed to even be associated with. Because I think when we, we've been bashed by our greatest rivals, Liverpool, and embarrassed by Manchester City, the biggest 2 0 embarrassment of all time, you know, there has to be a line drawn. But when you hear people defending this accidental manager, for me, it exposes them and nobody else. Not only do they not want to protest him, which is their absolute right, they want to intimidate the rest of us into not protesting him either. And this, this is where we are now. And today's the protest. Today's the day, everyone. This protest is irrelevant because it's not an ollie out protest. They're not allowing people to carry ollie out banners or to shout ollie out. I wonder how that's going to work. I don't know. For me, the biggest message would have had a thousand to two thousand to maybe even ten thousand people chanting Ollie out and Glazers out. Ollie out, Glazers out. It's got a great ring to it, hasn't it? But that's my idea of a great protest that sends a great message. But unfortunately, you people running this protest have bent the knee to the top reds. And unfortunately, you disappoint me because because of that reason 
Because this is not an ollie out protest, one little bit, it should never have been just an ollie out protest, a glazers out and an ollie out protest. Would have been really good. You're all wasting your fucking time and you're wasting my time. That's why I will be taking no notice of this protest, whether it's a successful protest or a failure of a protest. Neither will give me any satisfaction whatsoever because in war, and we are at war with Ollie and the Glazers, there's no question about that. You have to get your hands dirty and you have to do what's necessary. And yes, yes, you have to scream and sing Ollie out. That's the whole point. That's who should be protesting, the manager, the board and the owners. What don't you understand? But you're, you're thinking you're going to chant this man's name out of love? Why are you going down there? It's very sad. The Manchester United fandom is very sad because the voices in it, the celebrities in it, the elites in it, the people who make a lot of money off our backs from being apparent Manchester, alleged Manchester United fans are the ones shouting the narrative. They're the ones who make up all the rules and everyone else bends the fucking knee because they're scared that people will be toxic about them, that they'll lose viewers. And that's the sad thing about this. Protesting, going down there without protesting Ollie is pointless. And this protest is fucking pointless. And as I say, a week since Oli Gunnar Solskjaer lost against Manchester City, and we might as well frame it like that, we have got the best players of most teams in the Premier League. And we're doing nothing with them. We've had discussions about the tactics, the lack of nuance in his team selections, how he doesn't use his squad. He hasn't learned any lessons. He got thumped by Liverpool and played seven at the back. What does that tell you? Imagine playing seven at the back against Atalanta. It's, it's amazing, really. And City were able to pick his formation apart on Saturday because he's not a great tactician, he's not a great manager, and now he's being exposed and he doesn't know what to do next. He's being embarrassed. There are some people who reckon they have inside knowledge that Brendan Rodgers will be brought in before the Watford game. I was hoping for a change. I thought we may get a change. I'm now of the opinion we're not going to get a change. And of course, this is so disappointing and upsetting and heartbreaking. So congratulations, those of you who have got your own way to keep this pathetic, miserable excuse for a manager who isn't the nice bloke you keep on telling us he is. This is about the football side of the club. This matters to so many of us around the world. I know there's arguments between international fans and match day going fans. But the truth is, those match day fans have also got Twitter accounts and some of them are tweeting Oli out as well. They go to the match, they're respectful, they respect the manager. And quite right too. They don't want him to hear Oli out. But then he's also been booed and the players have been booed at times in the past three games or the past, past couple of games at Old Trafford. So you're not perfect either. The truth is, we all want the same thing a vibrant, successful Manchester United, at least challenging for honours, but preferably winning honours and playing the kind of football we did under Sir Alex. Now, you can't have everything in life, but we aspire to that as supporters. And I'm sure the players aspire to that as well. But unfortunately, the owners don't aspire to that. The manager don't aspire to that. The manager just wants to have the privilege and honour of being called the Manchester United manager. And that's where it ends for Ollie, And we're stuck with him. So I don't like this man anymore. Every time I see his face, I just feel, I'm going to say this, I feel hatred. I despise him now because I just don't want him around. I just don't want him there. And I think a lot of us feel the same, that he's holding the club hostage. He's hijacked the club. And it's like he's refusing to leave. I mean, the Glazers obviously happy to have him there. And by the way, before we end today's MUFC Daily, it doesn't matter a jot to me that Avram Glazer said that Cristiano Ronaldo was there from a, being a 16-year-old boy rather than being an 18-year-old boy. Yes, it proves he doesn't know what's going on, but how many owners would? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't get us what we want. 
Because as I said before, you can have the shittest owners in the world, but have a successful team and a great manager. And if they get a great manager, no one will ever bitch about them again. Nobody will even remember them or talk about them. This has been the MUFC Daily. I admit your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more MUFC Daily, where we will be reacting to this protest amongst a whole host of Manchester United talking points. Until then, goodbye.